So I intentionally bought the cheapest Mac and I uh, downloaded uh, DaVinci Resolve, the new version that is designed specifically for these computers. And I started testing the system. Ooh. And here we have four 4K files playing without any trouble on a device that is actually cheaper than my phone. And here we have the same files playing with color correction and grading applied. Yeah, hi, I'm Alex Jordan from Long Color Grading and FilmSimplified.com and uh, this is huge. Let's start. So let's discuss what's happening just to put things in, in context. First, you have Apple. Apple just released the first batch of computers that is using a new type of processor. We're not gonna get into details in this uh, uh, episode is for the next one, but they simply released new computers and these computers come with a new chip that is different than the original system that they used for like since 2005. So this is like a new redesigned Mac, think about it, think of it this way. Now, why should we care as content creators? Well, it's pretty simple. Apple promised that these new computers will give us a huge performance jump at a very low price. We will be able to edit like 4K files with a lot of color grading on cheaper systems. However, there's a caveat here. Um, in order for you to get maximum performance from these systems, the software that you're using, in our case, of course, is DaVinci Resolve, needs to be optimized for the system. And we knew about these chips for a while, and I always had the question of, will Blackmagic Design um, rewrite parts of Resolve or, or make Resolve compatible with these new Macs in a way that will allow us DaVinci Resolve users to uh, get these performance gains? Well, Blackmagic Design just released a new version of DaVinci Resolve that is designed specifically for these Macs. So this is the website of Blackmagic Design. If you scroll down a bit, here you have the new announcement. It says DaVinci Resolve 17.1 for new Apple M1 Max. Now, it's not clear now if this is going to be a different version entirely moving forward, uh, or is it going to be merged into the main installer of Resolve. However, we have a new version of Resolve that works with the M1 Max. The question is how to download it, because if you go to the normal download section, if you click here, and you scroll down to download, it just downloads the normal Resolve. Unfortunately, it does, it's not clear whether you're downloading this new version of Resolve that is designed to work with these Macs. So I just went back to the homepage. If you click on the article itself, this is a whole article about this special new version of Resolve that works with the M1 powered Macs. However, at least me, I couldn't find any download button here. So how to download it? It's pretty simple. You need to go to support. And in the left section of support here, if you scroll down, you have the latest download. Now, this version of Resolve says that it can be downloaded for Mac OS X, Windows, and Linux. So this is not the one you're looking for. You need to scroll down until you find a version of DaVinci Resolve that clearly said that this is designed to support the Apple M1 processor and is only available for Mac computers. And this is the button you need to click in order to download this file. So theoretically, if you get one of the new Macs and you get the new version of Resolve that supports these Macs, you can buy a very cheap computer that will outperform a lot of the very expensive computers now. Now that's the idea. So I intentionally bought the cheapest Mac of the new Macs that were released. This is the cheapest one. This is for $699 and it has the new processor inside. This is literally cheaper than a lot of mid-range phones. So what I did is I got this device and I uh, downloaded uh, DaVinci Resolve, the new version that is designed specifically for these computers. Why did I buy the cheapest Mac period here? Because I wanted to see if um, content creators with a limited budget can really benefit from this Mac. Like if it performs as promised, uh, this is going to be unbelievable. And I started testing the system. So let's first discuss the testing conditions. First of all, all the files are highly compressed. So if I click on this file and I come to metadata here, note that this file is compressed with PhotoJPEG. So this is not an easy file to play. And if we take a look at another file, this is a 4K file with H.264 compression, which makes this file harder to play on any system. So all the files are highly compressed, which makes them hard to play on any machine. Next, we have no optimized media. So if I go to playback, note that I turned off use optimized media if available, and I turned off use proxy media if available. On top of that, if we go to timeline proxy mode, notice that it's off. So 
all the files should play back at the highest resolution possible. Next, we have render cache. I set it to none, so we're not using any render cache. And so we're pushing this system to its limit. All the other settings are basically on default. One very important note here is that in, at the same time I was running these tests, I had the screen recorder uh, working in the background, which diverts some of the powers of the computer towards screen recording. So please note that all these test results are done with the screen recorder working in the background, which will reduce the performance of the computer a bit. So the first test is, can we run an HD file? So this is just a normal HD file playing smoothly. And this is the same file with two nodes added, one for color correction, one for color grading. And these are two HD files playing at the same time. These are the same two HD files with two nodes added per clip. And notice the smooth playback. Now we have three streams of full HD files playing at the same time. These are the same three files, but with two nodes added per clip in order to push the system. And now we have four full HD files playing smoothly without a problem. And these are the same four full HD files with two nodes added per file. Notice the smooth playback. And as you can see with HD, I was not able to break the system at all. We ran one, two, three, four files at the same time. And with each of the files having its own color correction and grading nodes, like two nodes per file, and there was no problem at all. This is unbelievable performance. This is a device that is actually cheaper than many phones, like, What's going on? So I was like, okay, now we're done with HD. Let's go to 4K. Here we have one 4K file playing smoothly. This is the same 4K file with two nodes added in order to push the system a bit. And these are two 4K files playing together at the same time without a problem. And here we have the same uh, two 4K files with two nodes added per file in order to push the system three 4K files at the same time. And here we have uh, three 4K files with two nodes added per file. And here we have four 4K files playing smoothly at the same time. And finally, we have four 4K files with two nodes added per file playing smoothly. Sometimes when I was playing, I had uh, like a couple of dropped frames, but only when I was playing four 4K files with two color correction and grading nodes per file. So now the final test. Let's try to push the grade. So I'm just going to play one HD file. However, I'm going to add many nodes and each one of these nodes is going to do some crazy stuff in order to see if we can break the system or if we can get the computer to slow down a bit. So this clip has a lot of crazy color uh, correction and grading uh, added on. It looks really bad, but it's designed to show you that with all these nodes and with all this crazy color grading, uh, this is an HD file, we're still getting smooth playback. And now let's try the same with 4K. So now one 4K file and we're going to try to push the system by adding a lot of notes. And here we have a 4K clip with the same crazy color added uh, to it, you know, the color correction and grading. However, we're still getting 25 frames per second and it looks pretty smooth. And again, this is unbelievable. Um, I really don't have any comments here. You, you, it's very easy to see the value of this thing. This kind of performance used to cost a lot of money before. However, with the new system now, uh, we're getting this performance with unbelievably uh, lower priced machines. And one more thing, I ran into a weird problem when importing, uh, just, just one issue when I'm importing uh, graphics files. So here I have uh, this uh, image here. It's basically a PNG file. However, I noticed that once I import it into the new resolve and I add it to the timeline, it, there seems to be a small problem when it's reading this PNG file. Now, this is the only problem I ran into so far. It's normal for this brand new technology to run into some hiccups, um, you know, in the first days. A couple of things to note here. First, this technology is Apple only. So if you don't like the Apple ecosystem or you don't want to use a Mac, then unfortunately at the moment, I'm sure similar technologies with, will come for PC later, of course, but at the moment it's basically uh, Mac only. So you have to use a Mac. 
Note that multiple devices were introduced with this technology. It's important to note that the MacBook Air out of these three devices seems to have lower performance. It comes with a lower tier model and it doesn't have a fan, which theoretically at least should limit the performance slightly, you know, than the other Macs. So if you're buying one of the new uh, Apple computers that use the M1 technology, just make sure to buy a, one with fan, at least to match the results I'm showing here. Uh, maybe the MacBook Air will work fine. I have no idea, I didn't test it. This is the only one I tested so far, which is the cheapest of the bunch. Okay, this is a monumental shift, not in terms of performance. I mean, this performance, we've always had this level of performance before. Where this is, extremely important is in terms of, think of it this way, performance per dollar. Because before, you can totally get this performance by spending like maybe three or four thousand dollars to get this level of performance. However, now you're spending like six or seven hundred dollars to get the same performance. What's really unique here is that we managed to do all this while pushing the system to the max. There was no optimization whatsoever. We did not use uh, caching, we did not use optimized media, we did not use uh, timeline proxy modes, we did nothing. Basically, we tried to push the system to its max and we still got this performance. So if you decided to use Resolve, uh, you can visit us at filmsimplified.com where you can join our free DaVinci Resolve crash course that is designed for the absolute beginner and will take you through each and every tab in Resolve. So now you have our course for free, Resolve for free, and this Mac for a really good price. Um, you can start right away. Thank you. Filmsimplified.com